you know, in 23 years of coaching, he's the best teammate I've ever been around. And 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 to say that about an 18-year-old young man that uh, that is as talented and has had the success that he's had at such an early age, yet he remains so humble and, and so willing to work and get better. I don't want to be the man, but as a as a legend, as as great. I just want to remember, be remembered as, as a, a nice guy. You know, um, Mike Beasley, he's a great basketball player, but off the court, he's something else. You know, I just want to be the, the, the goofy kid that, that put the smile on everybody's faces, you know. The thing that's so different these days, and Michael is an example of it, is the enormous athleticism uh, of players today. I mean, give me a break. Uh, where these guys get the quickness and the explosiveness, etc. And the whole game has really changed. Every day he'd come back and do something to, to show you what a special person he is. You know, whether whether it be his interaction with, with people in this community, whether it be how giving he was to his teammates uh, on the floor in practice. Uh, you know, you talk about a kid who never took himself out of, out of practice. I mean, he was battling uh, a bum big toe the whole year. You know, he never once came in and said, man, I can't practice today. You know, it's, uh, uh, he'd come in and deal with it and not just get through it, but, but excel and, and compete at a high level of practice. And he understood the responsibility that, that it takes to be the best player on a good team. I mean, a lot of people can be a good player on a bad team. He wanted to be the best player on a good team. And that's a big, big role to take, especially as an 18 year old. And, uh, but he was willing to embrace that. Coach used to, He's like to tell me sometimes, Mike, you gotta get some rest. You can't be in the gym, you know. That's that's kind of sort of where I got my my latest nickname, you know, uh, LO, you know, lights out. I'm just in the gym for the lights out. If you work hard as I do, it, it just look easy, you know. I in the gym to two in the morning. Sometimes I sleep sleep in the gym and go to class from the gym the next day. To be the reason why we can line up and beat KU at home, something that hadn't happened in 24 years. For him to accept all that responsibility and, and then go out and do it, uh, you know, shows the kind of person and player that he is. It was so important to the, to the people in the community. And, you know, they on ESPN hyping it all up. You know, they was 20 and 0 at the time, you know. They, they, I guess they felt like he couldn't be beat. So, uh, me and the guys, you know, got together, talked talk it over. We practiced hard all week, you know. And I think that was probably the most intense practice, week of practice we had all year. And, you know, we, it just carried over. We knew we had a talented group of young kids. And, uh, you know, our weakness was KU strength, which is our inexperience was their strength, which is they were the most experienced team in the country. And, but, you know, we also felt that if we did certain things and, and played a certain way, that. Uh, that we can create some problems for them. And, uh, you know, and to our kids' credit, all those young kids and even the upperclassmen, they believed from, from that first day of practice that we were going to win that game. Jake got off the bench and just couldn't miss. <laughs> I mean, everything everything he was doing was just so right, you know, from, from every, every little step he took, every pass he made, you know, every shot, every fast break he started, you know. He, it was tremendous, you know, and, and, and you've seen spurts of that throughout the year. You know, Jake was a special player. It just, just took a big game like that to bring it out of him. As soon as that, that horn sounded, you know, I, I was over there thanking uh, Bill Self. Uh, you know, and as soon as I did that, I, you know, I just kept walking towards the locker room, and uh, I got in the locker room, and I was alone. And <laughs> I didn't understand why it was taking so long. But, you know, eventually the players all got in there, and. We talked about, you know, the things that we talk about after every game. And, um, and then I, uh, when I came back outside, I, I just was amazed. I still couldn't believe just the thousands of people that were still there. And, uh, you know, watching 10-year-old kids and 70-year-old grown folks both crying and tears of joy, you know, tears of excitement. And that's when it hit me. That's, that's the first time that I, uh, uh, I, I, I sensed just uh, what a meaningful when that would be for for you know the the, the people of K State. You know, I never seen fans like that. I never seen fans so crazy and so enthusiastic about a basketball game. You know, that's just they love for the game. I, I think sometimes they love it more than we do. I don't think you can go anywhere in the country and, and get as much love as you do here. Man, in Kansas, you know, it's just it helped me grow. You know, helped me realize 
what I have to do to be successful, not just in basketball, but in life. You know, help me better to be responsible. I couldn't give enough thanks for that.